Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tuesday live stream. So uh, just like the thumbnail and title suggest, uh, it's just a Tuesday. And I know that uh, there's been a little bit of a pullback, a little bit of a dip. But uh, if you've been in the traditional uh, markets, first of all, welcome. Uh, this is not a big deal. 5%, 9%, whatever dip it actually has been is uh, nothing big. So uh, again, if you're from tr from TradFi, welcome to the foray. And uh, this is going to be an exciting time for you. So let's just jump right in. So first of all, if we take a look at uh, heat map, this is over on uh, Ben's website. I like using this stuff. It's uh, great because I get to steal all his information. I mean, we can find this anywhere, but I do like this part where we just take a look at just how down we are. <laughs> and like over the last 24 hours, Bitcoin's down 6%. I think we were, over, we were above 70, maybe 71, somewhere around there. And then across the board, you can see that uh, right here it states, you know, what is down? 93. What's green is seven. And I can barely even find those. So ICP is up, Litecoin, MNT, Maker, BGB, and Flare. Congratulations if you, if you hold those. But there is one thing I'd like to point out. If we can flip from the US dollar and put this and annotate this into Bitcoin, you can see that in, in all actuality, there's some actual good play if you were investing into something else, some alts, BNB, Solana, X, XRP, crazy, Link. Leo and a ton of other ones, different different ones. So again, it just depends on on what your risk tolerance is and where you want to get into it. And of course, we take a look over here. We can see the again denominated into dollars over 24 hours. It's been quite a quite a beating, and there's a couple of reasons for that. But we can see that uh, man, like Dogecoin took a 10% in the last 24 hours, and then over the seven day, over the seven day, it's been brutal. Five percent Ethereum eight which I, it doesn't really bother to me too much, but we started to get the 14, the 15, the 20, the 30%. You're like, all right, you got me on that one. 10% here, Uniswap 10%. I think big, Aptos down 20% for the week. So uh, yeah, dog with hat for some reason is still up 24% <laughs> over seven days. And of course, when we have days like this, what happens? Well, the norm, the huge. We're going to see liquidations come out heavy, and we uh, the longs and the shorts got liquidated almost half a billion dollars or $453 million uh, combined with the longs and the shorts. So moment of silence for those guys and gals playing that game. That is not my thing. But uh, if you want to keep going that way, have fun. And uh, I think there's more wreckage to come. And uh, what I'm talking about is I think there's going to be more of a dip and that's going to come in the next 24, 48, 72 hours. So if you got me on the sidelines, congratulations, you're going to love this. And uh, I actually talked about this a couple of days ago. And on this was on uh, March 31st. I said, and it was just as a reminder, I wasn't saying specifically like take profits today. I said, hey, take profits or I'll dump on you. And that's how we've always talked about this on the channel, right? Like we've done the hard work through the, uh, the bear market and we've dollar cost average. And I said, hey, look. You got to take some profits at some point or I'll dump on you. I had no idea we were going to drop this much. And again, I think we're going to drop even more stuff like this. This was out of Coindesk. It just dropped uh, uh, about four hours ago or so. It uh, looks like uh, Silk Road, which the U.S. government did a seizure and collected a ton of different, uh, well, Bitcoin primarily. And they've been slowly selling it off over the years. Uh Bitcoin worth $2 billion was moved by the U.S. government to, well, it's Coinbase. So at Bitcoin's current price, that would be around the $65,000 level. That would be roughly $2 billion worth of the token. And uh, a wallet tagged as belonging to the U.S. government moved 30,000 Bitcoins to us purported to be a Coinbase wallet laced Tuesday morning. So... Uh, Usually when the U.S. government moves their Bitcoin, it's not because they're like, hey, we need to move, put this in the Coinbase so we can store it on there forever. No, they moved it so they can dump it. So again, it's all how you look at it. If you look at this like this is the worst thing of all time and now Bitcoin's going to go down, or if you look at this and say, hey, this is actually a pretty decent opportunity if it keeps going down. I think it will, but again, I'm not the greatest at uh, timing markets. I'll just uh, say that. But if you believe that, uh, uh, the, <laughs> that the U.S. government's going to dump, tomorrow could be interesting. So we'll see how it goes. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comment section. But also, here's some, I don't know, mixed news, I might say. And this is Tether. Tether becomes the seventh largest Bitcoin holder with a $618 million purchase. And this was just on uh, <clears throat> April 1st. Here's what we got. 
So Tether <clears throat> now owns 0.3% of, of uh, Bitcoin, digital asset total circulating supply. And uh, it looks like on-chain data shows that stablecoin received almost 9,000 Bitcoin at 618 million from a Bitfinex hot wallet on March 31st. And this amplifies that there's total Bitcoin holdings to approximately 75,000 Bitcoin valued at uh, $5 billion. Now, of course, Tether is, uh, I believe, still the in the number three spot. Market cap is 104 billion. So it's backed up, thankfully, by something besides the US dollar and Bitcoin. And uh, this could be, depending on how you look at it, a good thing or a bad thing, centralization of or concentration of accumulation of Bitcoin. I think personally, it could be good as long as uh, it's not you know, massive, massive amounts. I think this is actually what uh, Tether could potentially need to get us through uh, the tough times. But there's that story, which was interesting. And I like, actually, I kind of, like to see that you know that uh, these these crypto projects, these digital assets, are being backed by something, and I like that. I do with Tether, but then I get a story like this, and I'm like, what is Tether doing? So this was same same reporter. Fixed Float suffers a 2.8 million dollar theft, and Tether freezes the account of the attackers. Now look, I know. Some people might say, well, that's great, Rob, because they froze the attackers and they don't want to, of course, they don't want to get away with crime, but that's not the ethos of digital assets and crypto. It is supposed to be decentralized. It is supposed to be autonomous. You're not supposed to be able to do that and just shut it off at a whim, which is a centralized decision-making process. And that's essentially what's going on here. So I know some people will say, well, that's good. I don't think this is good. Here's what happened. The centralized exchange fixed floats Ethereum-based hot wallet saw several suspicious transactions that led to the withdrawals of 2.8 million during the past day. Stablecoin issuer Tether block listed, should be blacklisted. 10 addresses, maybe blacklisted, addresses involved in these withdrawals, effectively freezing about 400,000 worth of the USDT tokens. So I guess that's good. And of course, I say this, and this is from uh, official response, approximately 14 hours ago, a staggering 2.8 million was withdrawn from fixed float. Funds were directed to a suspicious address, which subsequently received various digital assets, including ETH, USDT, wrapped ETH, DAI, and USDC. So as I say this, and I say, you know what, this is not, a, this is, of course, against the ethos, and I like to see this actually happening, but I have a question for you. If this happened to your wallet, let's say it was half or your entire life savings, would you be able to stand by and say, you know what, because of the ethos of crypto and it's immutable, we shouldn't be able to have a centralized state of authority. Would you say to yourself, I'm going to stand up and allow this to happen and get hacked for my life savings? Or if somebody stepped in, say a tether or a third party, would you be like, okay, maybe just this once? It's interesting to see what you'd think about it. So let me just think about that in the comments. And then lastly, meme coins. <laughs> meme coins are, they really are popping off. And just so you guys know, they're gambling. Okay, if you haven't figured that out yet, meme coins don't do anything. They're absolutely worthless. And people will say, but Rob, what about the community and so on and so forth? And it's great, you know, but let's be honest, it's gambling. And having said all that, uh, my friend Steven is just crushing it. He is my, uh, my head degen in charge and you can follow him. And we've talked about this. We talked about this on, on Friday and we talked about uh, one of the accounts that uh, we and him had talked about which was Costco hot dog, which sounds ridiculous. It sounds very funny, but it's, it was actually, it's actually one of the, uh, the top performing assets in my, in my phantom wallet. And of course, if you can take a look at this, Steven was the one that talked to me about this one. And uh, I got to tell you, we got in on this on Thursday and actually talked about this on the uh, NFA live show. It was me, uh, ben into the Cryptoverse and uh, Jessica from uh, Coin Bureau. And we were talking about just the, the crazy things that we invest into. And I said, yeah, you guys heard about this Costco hot dog? I'm going to buy some of that today. That was on Thursday. And of course, it crushed it. And now, of course, we're down here to four cents, five cents. But the reason why I bring this up is because it's important. It's important because when we're talking about these things, and I made a great amount of money. I mean, I'll, I'll just be honest with you. But the thing is, you have to be measured. And if I wasn't measured and, and really had the idea that you have to take profits, like the rules say, number one, it's all gone. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. So when I invested, the amount that I invest into, I'm like, if I lose all this, I don't really care because 
it's gambling. I know it's gambling. I'm not going to blame, blame anybody else. I'm a big boy. Everything is a scam until proven otherwise. Don't leave anything on, on exchanges. Don't use leverage and take profits along the way. So I'm going to do, I, I put together a quick presentation. Well, I'll probably take a little bit long. And we're going to go over this on Saturday or Sunday. And basically, the lessons that I learned from screwing around with meme coins are as such. There's really four things. You got to get in early. You got to take profits early. You got to create your own piggy bank. And there's a huge difference between taking profits on established projects <clears throat> where you DCA in and out versus new projects. And it just really just comes down to this. To make this super simple, when anything, when you, whatever you put in, if you put a hundred bucks in and it goes to $200, you take profits of a half and you let the rest ride. If it doubles again, you take profits of half. If it doubles again, you take profits of half. Now there's one way, there's a, that way to do it. Or you can do something like this where, and again, you have to take profits early and you have to, even if you say, this is the greatest meme of all time and I know it's going to be awesome or this is the greatest project of all time because it has Jeff Bezos himself saying he's going to invest in its own coin. You have to take profits early because it is not established. And if you don't do that, it's just going to be like everything else. It's going to go down. So again, Take profits when it when it doubles. Let the let, let the rest ride. You can wait till it doubles or four x's again, and take profits of half again. And you keep doing that until you can't do it anymore. That's it. I know some people say, "Well, Rob, what about the the, the life changing money that I could make?" Have fun. I played that game. It doesn't work out. Anyhow, we'll go over this on Saturday or Sunday. And what I want to do was just show you examples of Solana from back in the day. And uh, what else we pick? Axie Infinity, and things like you may have never heard of, like UMA. And I'm going to explain to you why that some of these projects are actually established and they work out, but some don't. And if you just follow this rule or some of the rules that I have and you implement some of them, it might actually be with you. Anyhow, let me know if you want to see that on Saturday or Sunday. We'll go from there. And then also, if we're being completely honest and we're talking about DGen stuff, I just released a video yesterday on Dan DGen. And it's about a new project called Rainmaker and Coin. I'm very on the fence about this one. I'll be honest with you. It's not a uh, paid sponsorship video. None of them are. I have to invest into them or I don't invest into them. And this one, I'm very conflicted. I'll be honest with you. And uh, I did a review. And at the end, I, I tell you all about the pros and the cons. But there was one thing I have to update. And that is that uh, they did launch using base. So it's something. And uh, it's on Tencent which is a launch pad. And what I like about Tencent is that it's got seven days. If you don't like the launch, you get your money back. And there's five tiers. And I explained that in one of the videos. And tier one is just 25 bucks. You know, if you can't afford 25 bucks, I hear you. I've been in that situation myself. It sucks. You shouldn't be investing anyhow, right? But if you look at 25 bucks and go, okay, this could probably disappear. Then I think you know where you stand. Tier two is $60, tier three is 150, and the top tier is 225. So those are the only things you can invest into. And again, when it doubles, take it out. Doubles again, take it out and go from there. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive.